that time of year and trying to figure out who they are, what they, exactly how they want to play. And again, I think they've done a terrific job getting better each and every game. And, and uh, but they settled in with the players that they've gotten, and they're really. I mean, we saw what they did the other night. They had the number one, the number two team in the country on the ropes with a chance to win it, and that I think speaks volumes about their players and their coaching staff. What needs to happen for y'all to avoid the foul trouble? It's been common the last couple of games. Again, I, we talked to our guys about the discipline part of it. I mean, I know we got guys that are competitive, and I know we got guys that think that they can keep guys from getting shots off, but we can't keep putting ourselves in a position to where we're overly aggressive. I mean, we got to stay aggressive. That's who we are. That's what we're built on. But we've got to avoid those that contact on shooters on the perimeter, trying to contest shots, and we've got to obviously we we're fouling too much inside where we're slapping down, trying to again trying to come up with deflections, but we're just reaching in at the wrong time and, and not making the, the the right play. But uh, again, that's that's where we've got to improve on those and eliminate those kind of fouls. Coach, our games just called that differently in this league from not to not. And you go back and look, look at the Alabama game. And you know nobody got the bonus in the first half, but people were beating each other up. I mean, two games later. You know what? It, I do think every game takes on its personality. I do. I really do. And I think the, knowing what's going to go night in and night out, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it would be interesting to see how our players would answer that question. But all I can tell you is that we tell our guys we got to get settled in. We've got to understand that each game is going to have its own personality. You've got you know, different officials on each game, and you've got to uh, adjust to what's going on. Woman in the Euros just playing three minutes the other night. Just the other night, we did product, productivity. And again, we're not, uh, we, we talked about it. We, we know every guy's got a specific role that they've got to play. And, and uh, just that Tobey was being effective. I thought that Olivier really had great presence there. Jonas uh, was got in foul trouble, but uh, you know, Tobey, and we just felt like Tobey and Olivier was really in a good spot. What's gone so well for Santi the last couple of games offensively in terms of maybe asserting himself differently than he has? I think that's a little bit to it. And again, I, I was really impressed. I mean, he didn't practice leading up to the A and M game, and he, had, you know, had some issues he was dealing with. But uh, I thought his focus, and again, uh, it, Santi is a guy that does make those adjustments game to game in terms of whatever the personality of the game is, how people are guarding him, and things like that. You know, Santi can go from a guy that. Absolutely, teams just don't give him a look at all. Then I think sometimes when he gets a wide open look, he's somewhat surprised. But uh, he, he, again, he knows how to adjust and do what he needs to do to affect the game one way or the other. You expect Josiah and Julian to play tomorrow? Yeah, I, I think so. They'll, and how much, we don't know. I, again, I think that'll be a game, a game time decision. But they both were in practice with us yesterday and will be, be back out there. And I haven't talked to uh, – uh, Julian, you know, Joe, as you would expect, I mean, he, he actually put a, a good load in yesterday and probably more than we thought he would or, or expect him to, but he's the one that felt like he wanted to do it. You know, he's going to be a little bit sore. He's certainly not 100%. And uh, Julian yesterday didn't do quite as much, but uh, was out there. And uh, I know our team admired them for them trying to push through what, the, and, and they've, got, they've got injuries, and they, but they want to help their team win. There's no doubt about that. But uh, again, we'll see how, how it all goes today. You talked about making sure, even when those guys are back, Jemai's needs to have a role. Just what does that look like? Do what? What does Jemai's role look like with those two guys? I think, I don't think, we don't expect his role to change at all. We expect him to continue to do what he's doing and get better at what he's doing. Can going through stretches like this bring a team closer together? You know, I'm, re I'm really proud of these guys, you know, it's, it's, and they know that we've had opportunities. They know that we, you know, had games but you know what this team has been resilient with all that they've had to deal with and and uh again i we love them i mean uh, i can tell you this through this time we haven't had a bad practice we haven't had a, a bad preparation for a game uh yeah we'd like to make some more shots here or there you know and, and again this time of year you know people are getting better everybody's getting better and and uh, in some ways through this we've gotten better too i think you've seen some guys emerge that we know that we can count on at any point in time you have to really feel like when you when you go through the valley that you're growing at the at maybe your most, and getting the other guys back, I think will just continue to give guys confidence that they don't have to try to do too much, and they've got guys that can help them, and and uh, and I think they all feel that what whatever we have to go on the court with, regardless, we've got a chance every night we go out there because of I think their effort, their personalities, their resiliency, and and uh, so as from a coaching staff standpoint, we're we're really proud of these guys and know that uh, they want to win more than anybody, too. I mean, we all, as a 
program we want to win, but we've got a group of guys that really care a great deal about winning and care about each other. Is that resiliency you're talking about, the kind of thing that, that shows up in March and, and helps a team in, in the postseason? Yeah, I think it is. I think it helps us through right now. I mean, you know, I mean, you go back to the games that we've lost, they, they've been right there. and. Obviously, we, we haven't, and again, I can sit here and say we haven't had our four group of guys, but I don't, I think where the resiliency comes in is that the fact that where, where they're down one guy, two guys, or three guys, these guys truly believe in each other, they can win games. And uh, it, it would be great to say that, you know, we could go through the whole year without any type of adversity, but I don't know of any team that does that. But where we want to be, and, and uh, yeah, I think it, it comes back around at some point in time, and certainly hope that we can get it going. Coach, how important is it to stay in the top four in the league? Well, again, it, I mean, I think conference tournaments are big. I mean, we all you want to win. I mean, you know, every year there will be a debate. Is it good to go win the tournament? No, I, again, I don't know of anybody that's worth the weight and salt that doesn't want to win anytime they go out on the court. And uh, But you go back to a year ago, Texas A&M proved. You know, if you want to – if you got the drive to get there, you can get there regardless. But uh, from a – just a – you know, just a – you think of – a logical standpoint, yeah, you'd rather play one less game, but uh, wherever it shakes out, it shakes out. Coming off in a, a game where you almost knock off Alabama at home in front of your fans, you play an extra five minutes. How tough a spot is that to then turn around and go on the road a couple of days later? For uh, no, say that again. Almost beating Alabama. Well, we did beat days. Alabama. No, okay. South Carolina, sorry. Okay. Almost beating them, playing an extra five minutes at home in front of your fans. How tough is that for them to go on the road? South oh, South oh, you're talking about South Carolina. Well, again, I think you've got to give South Carolina great credit uh, that uh, they fought hard. I think, again, I said it when I first started, it's a real compliment to their players and their coaching staff that, you know, they've uh, fought hard every game and they haven't won certainly as many games as we all want to win. We all want to win them all. But the fact that they were willing to fight the way they fought, but they, they have fought. They fought all year long. I don't can't tell you when they didn't. They, like all of us, early in the year when, when uh, you know, the coaching staff's putting together a, a team and a program, you know, they, a lot of things being put in place. And the fact that this late in the year where they have been and the, for them to go fight like they fought, and they'll come in here, again, they, they had a great win down at LSU. I think they made 15 threes. And so they're going to come play. I mean, this time of year, players play. And, uh, again, they've got a coaching staff that knows that they're building not only for – game tomorrow but for an SEC tournament I mean because there's a bid out there to be had by it doesn't matter who it is and uh, like I said there's it's been shown that teams can come out of nowhere to do that so everybody has something to play for and certainly South Carolina did the other night and they will continue to do that. Coach is there anything that you want to see out of this team in the last few games of the regular season that maybe you haven't seen as much as you would have wanted in the last few games? No I, I think we want to we want to play and, and continue to get better in terms of uh, the things we talked about, uh, we got to clean up and be more disciplined uh, with fouling. There's no question about that. And I still think we've got some areas on the offensive end that we've got to be more sure of the ball and know where we want to put the ball at certain times with certain players. But uh, that's from that point of view, that's that's where we'd like to see the improvement because we're going to be in possessions, possession games pretty much from here on out. and. Uh, Understanding that we've got to take care of the ball, understanding that we got to make people make baskets as opposed to putting them on the free throw line, and so it goes back to I guess one word would be discipline. How encouraging was Tobey's free throw shooting? I well, I think it shows you what when a when a person has a bad night and they're willing to come into the gym on their own and put extra time in and do all that, and they, you care as much as he cares uh, when it when it does work for him. It, you feel good because he's he put work in and paid off. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.